Uh, hi there. This is going to be a short video to show you one possible way of generating the uh, mid floor framing plan for our major house project. There's more than one way of doing this, um, but this is just a couple of methods that will hopefully get you started. First of all, what I tend to do is let's get a drawing on the view map. So I'm going to go to the organizer. And when I get my organizer, because the mid floor, we're providing the supports for the first floor, I would drag over a copy of this drawing and then just rename it to mid floor framing. Um, the next thing to do is to highlight this view you've created and check the settings. First thing, layer combination. Pick one that you think would be suitable. Plan floor framing looks good. The scale, you can leave it, have it at 1 to 50, 1 to 100. Uh, it's not going to be crucial because we can change the scale on our layout. Uh, the rest of them you can leave. Uh, this one you could probably put at 1 to 50 uh, New Zealand. 21. I think 21 refers to Archicad 21 and the suppliers just haven't updated that yet. And fit in the window should be okay. Now, if you read the CAD notes, there's a couple of pages made available on Moodle. You can go over this if you think this video has gone a little quickly. Okay, I'm going to do that. And next thing I'm going to do is just open up the drawing. And I'm going to cancel out my um, organizer. Now, you can see I've got a trace reference on here. I'll just knock that off. And what we're left with is really the first floor plan. And uh, there's things on this that we don't really want to see, which would be like the walls. But there's other important things we do want to see, as in this void and the actual stairwell itself. So what I would probably tend to do now is I'm going to maybe draw a square around the extent of the building. Then what I would do is kind of highlight the void and where my little bridge might need to be. So I don't think I need the walls. I'm going to go to the layer control and I'm just going to make sure I'm in the right layer uh, combination. And if I go to design walls and just turn those off and update it, and I'm left with this uh, little layout. Now I've already drawn the extent of the first floor and I've highlighted where my, I think my little bridge will be around this void. And I suppose to enable me to model up my Joyce, I need to see what they're going to be supported on. That would mean going to the ground floor and say showing this trace reference because these walls are going to be where my joists are supported. So you look and see should they span this direction, should they span that direction. Just do a rough plan, sketch it out and then we will start to model up something. So there's a couple of ways of modeling it up. One of them is the beam tool. So if I just click the beam tool, it's going to be a flat beam this time, not like your uh, reframing. So if we know the size of it, you'll work it out. It could be 140, it could be 190, 240. I'm just going to put in an arbitrary figure here. And I'm going to do the same for the width. And here you'll put in a figure which is minus. And that is to allow for the particle board flooring. We're drawing on the first floor. Uh, everything else I think we can leave, but again, check the detailed notes. And we'll click OK. So this is using the beam tool. And all I'm going to do then is make sure I draw a support from the wall. Hold the shift button down and go to the extent of the other wall. And I've got a beam. Normally, you'll drag these over to the edge to use them as your set out choice. So I'm just going to drag it over and come right over to the edge. And you may have a double joist over here, in which case you just select the joist and go edit, move, drag a copy. I'm just going to drag a copy from here to here. Now, because my joists, I've made them wider than what a typical joist would be because I want you to work that out. That's why it's over sailing the wall slightly. Now, once we've got the walls in the right position, 
and you can check via a section as well uh, whether they're actually sitting where they should be in relationship to the uh, framing. So I can actually look through this section. I'll just have a go at that and say open with current G settings. And in this one, we've already got a slab here. So that fill, I'm going to take it out. And this fill, I'm going to take it out because they were there as part of my design. And over here, I seem to have a little slab structure, uh, which I think I had tried previously. And this one over here is the uh, two beams that I had created, or two joists. And you can see there's a little gap between the finished floor level. I'll just measure that to the top of my joists, which is 21, uh, 20 millimeters approximately. So I, I probably haven't zoomed in enough to the top of the finished floor level. So I'm pretty happy where these are located. So I'll just go back to my plan. And basically all you do then is select one of your joists. You should have worked out the spacings. And all you gotta do is then go edit uh, I think it's move and then multiply or control U. If you hit the spread and say it's going to be whatever spacings, I'm going to put in 500, but that is not a 3604 dimension. I want you to check them. Click OK. Then zoom in and you can just go to the edge of your element, hold the shift button down, and come right up until where we think these things should finish. Uh, if there's a wall under here, you can stick on some joists underneath that wall. And then what we'll do is we'll just select all beams. We'll do F5, uh, zoom in everything. And you can see that I've already starting to get a mid-floor framing plan uh, generating. So the same thing, now I seem to have done something with my section here. So I'm going to undo that. So what I'd done is I'd selected that section. I should have deselected it and I'll just do the same thing control U spread those out again and I'm just showing this very very quickly now you have got to decide what's happening around this bridge do you have joists spanning vertically on this diagram or do they go horizontally just check your table in 3604 have a look at what happens at the top of the stairs now on this side I'm going to do it using a slab too just to demonstrate the different options you have. So if I go to the slab tool, and here I've got a 240 slab. I'm saying it's on the first floor, minus 20. Uh, I'll make this 225 again, just uh, I haven't sized the 240. Again, that's something you guys will check out. Um, first floor, yeah, minus 20. What I normally find is I go to this one and I can then go to the edge and just zoom in and click to the edge of the first floor, click here, and then go X minus 50. And that minus 50 is the width of our joist. I've put in 50 because I know it's not a 3604 dimension, and I want you guys to go to your tables and work that out. So I've got a slab here. I'm just going to do what I did before, go Control U, 500, and I'm just going to drag and multiply those copies all the way up to where they're needed. And again, if it's needed under this wall, bring a couple of other copies of that to bear over there. Now, if I just go to the selection tool and go Control A, F5, you can see that there's a lot of things happening here. You can see the bathroom furniture I left on, which I would normally turn off. You could put in a little particle board slab if you like, as long as we can see the framing below it, but uh, this uh, 3D is just missing the void and the bridge. And I think knowing what I've already demonstrated to you, you can now use either a beam or a slab to create that little structure and also whatever blocking you may need. So this is uh, a subfloor, sorry, midfloor framing plan. And if I turn off the trace reference and if I go and find out what layer these are on at design fittings plumbing I can turn those off design fittings plumbing update that you can use these to, uh, to indicate possible wet areas and then turn them off it's up to you how you decide to do that 
but it's a fairly simple plan and it just needs a lot of notes to do with timber treatments and what you need to put on it will be as per the checklist. Uh, thank you, I hope this video helps and please use it in conjunction with the other Moodle resources.